Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Foliage. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. So guys, today I'm going to show you how to prepare soil for your foliage plants and also for your flowering plants. I tend to use this soil for all my foliage plants like caladiums, calatheas, philodendrons, pothos and even my flowering plants. So guys, this is the same coco peat that I had prepared in my last video, which I let it sit over for 24 hours. And then I squeezed out the excess water and I'm using it in this mix. So apart from coco peat, I'm using some regular garden soil and I'm using aquarium sand. Now guys, I personally prefer to use aquarium sand because it has slightly larger granules as compared to river sand. Now, if you do not have aquarium sand, it's absolutely fine. You can even use river sand as well. Now, guys, as you can see, these are the main components for making the soil mix. Now, over here, as you can see, I have taken a little bit of perlite because I did not have a lot of perlite due to lockdown. I was not able to order any perlite. But for me, it's not a big issue because I already have aquarium sand that has slightly larger granules. So it tends to make my soil mix very airy. But if you do not have a the aquarium sand then you can use two parts of perlite perlite will just make your soil more airy and light so these are the four important components that you need to have in your soil composition in order to have a very good soil for your foliage and flowering plants now apart from that these are optional these are extra additions it's just optional this is tree box and then we have some cocoa chips now these both things are just additions if you do not have it it's absolutely fine the other four components are very 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 important so this is how the uh, coconut chips look like or cocoa chips look like this is again you will find this either online or you can even purchase it from your local nursery if you do not find in your local nursery you can even try it online they are readily available so now i know a lot of you might have questioned that this soil mix is incomplete because yes i have not added any fertilizers in this i have not used any cow dung manure i have not used compost i have not used wormy compost or bone meal the reason behind is I'm not a very big fan of solid fertilizers or I'm not a big fan of slow release fertilizers. I only tend to use compost tea for my plants. Basically, I tend to only use liquid fertilizers. I tend to use it either once a week or once in two weeks. But if you want to use any kind of solid fertilizers like compost, cow dung, bone meal or wormy compost, you can add it according to your choice. As I've said this earlier as well, liquid fertilizer tends to evenly spread in the soil. It also is much easier for the plant to absorb as compared to the solid fertilizer or slow release fertilizer. But the only disadvantage is that whenever you're using liquid fertilizer, it has to be done maybe once in a week or maybe once in two weeks, depending upon the type of plant. If it's a heavy feeder, then you'll have to do it once a week. If it's a regular plant, which does not need a lot of nutrients, then probably you can do it once in two weeks. So now I've gone ahead and mixed everything together you can see that the soil already looks really good now as you can see the best way to find out whether your soil is good or no whether the mix has been good or no it's always better try to squeeze the soil in between of your fist and when you open it the soil should fall apart so this is how you can determine whether your soil is good or not because you do not want to have really compact soil for your plant because a loose soil like this will help the roots breathe and there has to be a good amount of air circulation in the soil so guys, now let's go ahead and repot our plants. Now guys, over here, I'm using five inch of pots. Now I have used a green net because I had this extra shade net that was available. So I've cut them into round shape and add them to the bottom. This is basically to avoid any soil flowing out of the pot whenever we water our plants. You can even add rocks, pebbles, or you can even use net, whichever is available, but it's very, very necessary that you add some kind of dressing at the bottom so that whenever you water the soil does not flow out now guys there is another thing this is again optional if you have charcoal you can even use charcoal now i had little bit of charcoal available so i'm going to add it at the bottom now this uh, charcoal also tends to help in removing any impurities from the soil it also helps in drainage so this again is completely optional if you have charcoal you can use it it's not that you have to purchase it or you have to put it in all your pots if it's available you can use it if it's not it's absolutely fine you can just use pebbles and then start adding in the soil mix that we just prepared so we have our soil and our plants ready that are going to be repotted now guys another important thing which a lot of people do not say this now guys whenever you're doing a repotting of a plant that has been recently purchased from nursery or online always ensure that when you're doing a repotting do a thorough check 
which means that you need to check if the roots are healthy, if the stem is healthy, check for the underneath of the leaves if there are any insects or no and always ensure that the pot and the soil that you're using is correct. Even the pot size because it should not happen that within a couple of months, maybe like two or three months, you're again doing a repotting which is not very good for plants because if you're going to do a repotting every two or three months, it's not very good for the plant's health because every time you're going to uproot the plant by the roots, you're going to take it out from the pot this will overall affect the growth and the health of the plant a lot of healthy plants do not need repotting for at least six months to a year it's always better to wait for the plant to completely get root bound before doing a transplant so guys always take time whenever you're doing your first repotting check that everything is in place you are happy with the pot you are happy with the pot size you have the correct soil and only then repot your plants so that this will avoid doing often repotting because when you're going to do often repotting one is that it is time consuming secondly it's not very good for your plants to being uh, reported very frequently because there is something called as transplant shock a lot of times plants do go into transplant shock and it's at times it can be fatal at times the plant can completely die due to shock so you have to be very very careful a lot of my plants i don't even report them for almost one and a half year to two years until and unless they tend to get root bound but yes if the plant is showing some signs of discomfort maybe the plant is having some issues then that is the only time you can report or you can check for the roots but if your plant is doing quite healthy and just because you're not liking the color or the size of the pot please don't do the changes don't harm the plant by just uprooting it every now and then so it's very very important that you do a routine check now over here as you can see this is my a philodendron birkin that i am repotting because this was due for a repotting you can see the pot that it was there in earlier it was completely root bound so it was time to repot this guy so i thought that i'm going to show you how to repot as you can see uh, i have loosened a little bit of the roots i've not completely loosened it i've just loosened a little bit of the roots and then i have added it into this pot now guys another important thing whenever you're putting in the soil try to gently press the soil so that you can release all the air pockets in the soil so very very gently ensure that you do not press it too hard that the roots break so you have to be very gentle and try to release all the air pockets that are there so i've gone ahead and repotted three of my plants now all the three pots are of five inch in size now you can see that i've completely filled the soil up to the brim so when i'm going to water the soil will settle down because this has cocoa peat and sand so it looks very fluffy right now but as soon as i water the pot the soil will start to settle down so there is going to be at least one to half inch of gap in between the edge of the pot and the soil so after filling in uh, three pots which were of five inch each i'm still left with a lot of more soil i think i can probably fill in another two pots which are of five inches so guys in my last video as you had seen the amount of cocoa peat i had taken so with that much little amount of cocoa peat i was able to fill in so many pots so now it's time to test because we need to test whether the soil is well draining or no now guys remember every foliage plants or even for that matter a flowering plant the soil has to be well draining you cannot let a plant sit in water for too long otherwise there is going to be an issue of root rot so every soil that you use has to be well draining so that's what we are going to check i'll quickly do the watering for this pot and check how soon the water starts to drain so guys as you can see the soil is well draining we have passed the test of a well draining soil you can see how quickly the water started to leave the pot now this is a idle type of soil that you would require for your foliage plants or even for that matter for your flowering plants so guys this is how the soil has to be it has to be loose porous well draining and the cocoa peat in that will retain slight moisture which most of our plants tend to like now guys this type of soil mix i tend to use for all my plants all my foliage plants plants like caladiums, calatheas, philodendrons, pothos, even for a lot of my flowering plants. So guys, I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing to it. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep planting.